You are tuning in to John Pierre and Mary's fun loving, crazy, and honest podcast. If it don't smell bad, it must be clean. Unequally yoked, where any and every topic, life, marriage, I'll go first because I have something to say. Uh oh. Kids and entrepreneurship are up for discussion. How does Mary, a pastor's daughter, and John, a guy who rarely saw the inside of a church growing up, get together? No, no, no. And stay, stay together. together. We all have roles. What does life look like 10 plus years into marriage? Two kids and trying to run a family business. How do we keep this nest egg from cracking? What you mean? Listen in to Unequally Yoked as we dive in to give a man. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and woman's perspective. Somebody, somebody back me up on this. To all the topics married folks are talking about. Are you ready? Let's do this, boo. Welcome back. We are here for the ninth and final episode of Unequally Yoked with Jean Pierre and Mary. Bum, 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 bum. DJ Horn <laughs> off the top, off top. Still finishing my coffee. Yes, cold. indeed. Yes. So we're uh, super excited to be here. We want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, our social media tags as normal. Mine is Jean Pierre TJP, and mine is Mary TJP. And our business page is Harper Rain Homes, and our YouTube channel is also Harper Rain Homes. So please yeah. subscribe, check in with us, let us know you're you're checking out the the podcast, and let us know what you think. Yeah, we love all the comments, all the feedback, all the questions, and all the love. All the love. That's all very love. important. But so. we. So what are we talking about today? Because well, last time, when I say last time, a few minutes ago, because <laughs> we just decided to keep it going. Yeah. You know, we keep 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 the juices going. We were talking about our backgrounds. Yes, and I I yeah. talked a lot about myself, but we didn't really get to hear much from Mary. So mm -hmm. I think it's only appropriate uh, that on this ninth and final episode we. Finish it with you. Oh well, that's awesome. What what what's going on? Let's talk about your um your background. You know how you were raised, things that stuck out to you, mm -hmm. um, things that you kind of hold on to that's trying to protect your kids from whatever mm -hmm. you know whatever's mm -hmm. on your mind. So, um, I will ask you your upbringing. What was it like? <laughs> that sounded really hosty. What was it you like? like? What was it like? I want to know. Well, what do you mean? I want to know like all of your in-depth thing is whenever you in were a depth. kid. Yeah, like when you were a kid and you were growing up, like was race a big deal? Mm. Um, you know, how did how did your how did your parents deal with that? It, if if it was a big deal, mm. um, what other things happened? Like what what were some of the things that cuz like I know whenever you were uh, uh, you know, as you got into your teenage years, I know a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but tell me tell me about your really really young childhood. What was that like? I mean, I don't remember, you know, cause you told a story about, um, you know, being 13 or 14 and asking questions. Yeah. Um, I, I think I come from that generation of, we didn't, we ain't asked no questions. Like you, we weren't really allowed to ask questions to the, That's to tough. the parents. You know what I yeah. mean? We were the, the be seen and not heard, you know, generation. So yeah. the things that I learned about, um, as a, as a young kid, yeah, yeah. Um, we're just from being the only black family for a very long time in our neighborhood. Yeah, what was that? Um, like? I mean, it was it was. I don't know how what it was like because it wasn't. I, you don't know what you yeah, don't I was know. Gonna say it was you don't know anything yeah. outside it's all, it's of all, what. That's all it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it it definitely there were moments where I I didn't understand when someone would want to come and, and touch my hair mm -hmm. and they would ask me what color I was. And I would say brown because that's, that's like the color that you were. That was the color. I, you <laughs> so, know what I mean? Well, let me ask you about the whole hair thing. So, you know, because I know that's a big deal for you with our kids. Like you don't like it when people won't reach out and touch their hair. And yeah. so um, tell me about that because I'm that, that's one thing that I'm I know I'm you still struggle baffled. with it. Yeah, I'm baffled by that one. So tell me about that. one. What, I can't believe from a, a person who had the kind of hair because I've seen your baby pictures. We have to drop a, a baby picture of you in this. But I, I cannot. There's no way, John, that people did not come up to you and touch your hair. Oh, they did all the time. And I mean, you're from 1979. Yeah. You know, so I yeah, come on. I, the whole thing, there is twofold. So as a kid, I didn't think it was a big deal until it came a big deal. When touching my hair out of curiosity, because uh -huh. it's a different texture from yours, yeah. is then turned to something negative. 
by, like, by, 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 by the people, to, like, the people, people who touch your, your hair. hair. They're like, gotcha, oh, okay. I, I want to see what it feels like. And then start comparing it to to things that are not deemed pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, don't be calling my hair no crunchy, scratchy, <laughs> nappy. Like, no, ho, 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 ho. You know right. what I'm saying? Well, that, that, that could also be part Why of your it. hair don't move? Why? How can yeah, it yeah, stay yeah. in that style? Because we used to put our hair in all these finger waves and all kinds of <laughs> and free. You know, because I, I slept on my face. You know? right. <laughs> You don't want to mess up your hair. You're not don't supposed to mess, mess up, up your hair. hair. But, you know, it is a big deal for me for our children, mainly because I don't think anybody should touch anybody's children. I think it, you don't touch anybody's body or your person without their permission. And them touching their hair, I, I this is not an exhibit. We're not at the zoo, okay? And you're not going to touch my child and you're not going to touch their hair because you're curious and you want to compare it and start talking textures and oh, it feels like... But so, so so that's my... That's my. Cotton! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I, my my thing is so for me it wasn't like that um you know and so I, I just don't have those same preconceived notions about what people are 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 going to be saying or doing when they're touching their hair now I am with you there definitely needs to be a personal space you know you need to have your personal space people need to respect people's personal space um, so I understand that but the hair thing aside like how what what would you take away from your childhood that you think um, is something that you wouldn't want your kids exposed to or that you're trying to protect your kids from being exposed to? I think one, of, you know, and, and not judging the parents or not, you know, our parents, now that I'm a parent, I get that they did the best that they could right. coming from the generation they came from. Yeah. And because I have made it a, um, a purpose of mine to just get more understanding mm -hmm. and not judge them for the decisions that they made. Like for me, um, learning how to communicate and mm -hmm. even articulate my feelings mm -hmm. has been a journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, we were not encouraged to really just talk about how we feel. Yeah. Um, the uh, affection was not shown. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I just remember my parents working like they, they work, they were hard yeah. workers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we, we were the kids, we couldn't touch the AC in the summertime. <laughs> okay. We was Running in there. Light bill. Hey, your light bill is going to be nothing. We, we turned, <laughs> my dad would turn the AC on when he came home from work in the evening. So right. nobody wanted to hang out at that house. Right. It was, hot it was always day. hot. <laughs> but for our kids, I, I am surprised at how I've been able to a show them affection. Yeah. Without doubt, I've always said our kids will never, ever have to worry and wonder if their parents love them. Right. That's, because that's we a big tell deal. them, yeah. we show them, like, and they, too, are very affectionate yeah, kids. Are. Yeah, You know what I mean? So I, I understand how one's background can influence who you are today, but I really feel like I've been fighting against that. Like just being someone who's breaking that cycle of yeah. how I was raised. Well, yeah, you know? and I, and I think that I think that's just. But you know, in the, in the way that you're saying that you're trying to do the opposite of that, I think it's still very, it's still an influence because you know sure. you, you don't you don't want to do the things that you felt like you were lacking um, as a kid, and so um, that's interesting. So like, what do you what do you feel like you, you know, when you were growing up? especially when it comes to things like um, race or even for in your particular case, religion, right? Like mm. in, in how, mm -hmm. how you guys were raised, mm -hmm. um, you know, like you guys didn't celebrate um, holidays and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. You know, how is that, how has that influenced? Well, which, we're, you and I are still having the Santa debate to this day. Well, so obviously <laughs> well, the, the, the Santa thing is a small part, but like, yeah, you, you guys didn't do birthdays. You guys didn't do. Yeah. You know. Well, we got a birthday cake, but we didn't. It wasn't like and, and I don't think we we didn't have birthday parties more right. so because I think we just didn't have money. Oh, well, that you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we growing up uh, in a in a very strict religious like it was funny. I was thinking this morning because it's real cold outside. <laughs> like we used to stand outside at that bus stop because we couldn't wear pants. We couldn't wear jewelry. Oh, so you yeah, know yeah. how we kept warm how? with our with no pants. Okay, John, 
I, I mean, my, I used to wear shorts. My, my, well, you still wear shorts yeah, and flip flops <laughs> and now at 30 right degree now, weather. Okay. But we used to put that, my mom used to put Vaseline <laughs> or or uh, that blue magic on our legs. We used to go to school shiny and greasy, honey, but we were protected from the elements. From the elements. The socks sky high up to our knees. Oh and yeah, we was we was cold. Yeah, the, the women couldn't wear jewelry, makeup, high heels. They We couldn't listen to, you know, they call it, uh, you know, uh, the devil music, circular music. We couldn't listen to Secular any, music, yeah, uh-huh. We couldn't, we couldn't, it was very restrictive. So uh, that's pretty interesting that you just said that because now it's, it's making me, now I'm kind of bringing it around to like how, because now you're very colorful. Like you're really colorful, and even in your when you were talking about work and designs and stuff like that, mm. you 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 find a lot of color, and I feel like you you have a lot of personality. And just well, in my life. mom, my mom was a uh, she found a way. In like how, my mom really found a way uh, to really. It's like yeah, we couldn't wear pants, and we didn't have a lot of money, but we went to garage sales, mm-hmm. and we were like, hey. We were some well dressed kids. Yeah. It, it may have been garage sale clothes, but they were polo, nautica, Tommy. We Name were, brand. We were wearing that stuff before anybody else was wearing it. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> my, mama, my mama made sure we were dressed. We weren't ashy, and our hair was close <laughs> because how we presented ourselves in the world was important, and that yeah. was something that she really, really, you know, pressed upon us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we were surrounded by art. Like my mom had artwork all over our house, and she changed our furniture furniture out or change that not change it out but she would put it in a different on a different wall yeah. like to make it feel new gotcha. like we would spend saturdays moving our bedroom around and turning the covers on the other side and mm. just you know giving she she really worked with what she had yeah and That's i can cool. see how that really has influenced me yeah you know in, in my designs and just how I see color. See, yeah. I, that's something I didn't even know that. Look at God. Because that's a breakthrough for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's well, a breakthrough. Yeah, I know. I, one, one coming of the, through. Coming through. Huh? Not through. <laughs> through. <laughs> so I think, but I think one of the things that, um, it's just over the course of our marriage that has really changed is how you've, you viewed your relationship with your, especially with your mom, um, a little bit with your dad as well. But like, you know, you, you had a lot of, um, uh, resentment and stuff about f- whenever from your younger childhood, whenever you're mm-hmm. growing up, mm-hmm. um, how has that changed? And what do you think has changed? Like, wh- what do you think changed the way that you now mm-hmm. view not only your mom, but just like, especially your new experience with them and, and your mom and the kids and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, it changed drastically when Harper was born, mm-hmm. like, which it, 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 it's so crazy because, and I'm sure a lot of parents out, out there can understand where I'm coming from. It, it, it feels like we didn't have a life before them. Like, they feel like they've always been here. Yeah. Like, Harper, she'll be five this year, but man, that feel like a long, like, she's been here forever. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it feels like an, she's been here a long time. It's an entirely new experience, for yeah. sure. So how did, how did that, inf- so what, what about that changed how you... You, I, you I, I think we I think I've mentioned this to you before, but I just felt like when she came into the world, I just didn't have I didn't have any more room. Yeah. Like in my heart, mm. in my body for all the negative feelings. Yeah. Like I just wanted to just let it all go. And I didn't want to, and again, not judging anybody's parents, our parents, whatever. I always say they did the, they really did do the best they yeah. can because we have more information. They didn't have the information that we right. have, right, right, to be better and to recognize things and have names for things and diagnoses and things like that. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to love. I just mm. wanted to have all the love. For Harper, that and I'm like she deserves it. Like mm-hmm. she don't deserve to have a parent that's bringing in baggage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From their childhood and then saying this, oh, I didn't. I'm doing this because I didn't know any better. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, well, yeah. I got whoopings. You should get whooped too. Nah, man, who like getting whooped? <laughs> nobody. 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 Like there has to be another way, yeah. you know. And so that's always been me, even from a kid. I've yeah. always been like, man. There's got to be something there. like there's got to be another gotta way. way. Got to be another you way. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think that's it's interesting that that we talk about you know um, finding another way. You know, and and I think that's really cool what you just said about not 
you know, whenever Harper came, you just you didn't have room in your body for mm-hmm. for for negativity. And I was wearing and I was wearing it. Yeah. And when I released it, I felt so light. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, and I could tell that that that, mm-hmm. that, that happened. Mm-hmm. And I should, I think that whenever you released that uh, uh, that whatever you want to call it, negativity, resentment, whatever it was, yeah. it really opened up the space for your mom to get involved with uh, our kids' lives mm-hmm. and become, you mm-hmm. know, a really, really good Mimi. And she yeah. is a really good Mimi. Yeah, she's a yeah, great Mimi. You know? and, yeah. and, um, well, this is her second chance. Yeah, this is, this yeah. is her chance. You know, I, my parents divorced when I was eight years old. Yeah. So, you know, my life and our life changed drastically yeah, yeah. from the, the restricted and the strict background of, of the church to then we're like in the middle. And then, you know, between both of my parents going back and forth, yeah. still in Slidell. And yeah. then when my dad moved to Houston, mm-hmm. uh, my sixth grade year, I was here one year. When I was 12 years old, I went to Ruby Reed Intermediate. Ruby Reed. <laughs> Shout out. Is that Aldine District? I have no idea. I think it is. I cool think name. it's Aldine. And then I moved back to Slidell my seventh grade year. Okay. So it was just trying now to figure out who am I because I didn't have a choice before. And now I'm giving all the independence, too much independence. We had a good time. Okay. <laughs> We used to go to the quarter. Listen, y'all want to y'all want to hear my story. Anyway, we, we do want to hear your we stories. We used to have a good time. We had a good time, and you know. So what saying. what was that like? What was that like transitioning going from uh, Slidell to Houston? Yeah, then back, back to Slidell. Back to Slidell. You know, you're just trying to figure it out. Yeah. you're just like, where do I fit in? I want to please my dad. Like during the summer times, I would still come to Houston every summer, just mm-hmm. like you went to Missouri mm-hmm. every summer. I came to Houston every summer, and sometimes by myself. Like my sister sometimes didn't come with me. Yeah, and when I would come here, I I would it was like I would dive right back into you know being a part of the church. Yeah, and then once the summer was over, I would go back home. And we in the quarter. <laughs> in the quarter. We we had yes, and in in junior high school, like my mom had us involved in so Y'all many things. <laughs> we did Bayou Classic. We on we on Bourbon Street in like seventh eighth grade. Yeah, okay? that's that's insane for anybody who's been on Bourbon Street. Man, you see the little kids out there, you be like, oh just my remember that was me. Man, that's that <laughs> we is... did by ourselves. We did. We had a good time. Ooh, yeah. I don't know about that one. We had I a don't good know. time. So, what what would you take away? So, like, we kind of talked a little bit on the peri- on on the outside looking in of what yeah. you know what your what your childhood was like. Yeah. But what do you think? Um, give me one influence. One thing that happened to you, or not one thing, but maybe one set of circumstances that was kind of consistent throughout your childhood that you want to pass on to your kids. Mm, I, I like that you bring it to the... I've, I've ha- I really have to dig on that one. Something that I really... Something that it, that I can carry on and, and share with them. Yeah. Um... I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you do. Think about it. You can. Well, uh, I will say I kind of brought it up a little bit. Just I love that my mom really tried to find a way to get us involved. Yeah. And, um, you know, we went to camps. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, she introduced us to like the HBCU experience. And, you know, I used to go to these camps and uh, stay in the dorms at Southern University and at, you know, it, it was just, she really, like, we used to march on Martin Luther King Day. Like, we would have to get up early, and we used to go march. I'm like, I don't know what we marching for. I thought we already <laughs> came. Uh, we have overcome. <laughs> we have overcome. But, we, we, you know, but, you know, she really, that's something, because we were just at the Martin Luther King Parade yep. a couple weeks ago with our kids. And I think really uh, teaching our children history and where they come from and who we come from, um, I would like to pass that on to them. So thank you for bringing it out of me. Because we always remember the bad things, but not yeah, the good we all, things. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it's important, and I think that's something that I've noticed that you you do a lot uh, with our. You kids. was gonna answer it for me, huh? No, I wasn't oh. going to, but because I, I, I thought that might be something you bring up, because I, I just remember you talking a lot about as a kid, yeah. your mom taking you to volunteer. We volunteered uh, you know, a, lot. a lot. I licked a lot of envelopes. <laughs> you know, you volunteered politics. You guys went to yeah because yeah. your mom was in that in that um, arena. Yeah. But we you, went to my mom really introduced us into like the. Uh, you know, LG, um, B- LGBTQ, LGBTQT. We we was there before everybody else was there. Like my mom, my mom was on a 
she she's pretty amazing like yeah. we used to go to the gay and lesbian churches yeah. like we were again marching in parades like she really um had a huge influence and, and was out there doing things that a lot of people were not comfortable doing right and we were right there with her and that's cool mm-hmm. and that's a cool experience so mm-hmm. i think that does influence you because i know that that's one thing you talked to me about how you know, you always want to try to take the kids somewhere. You want to go do something that just exposes them to yeah. to more things. And I think that's cool. You know, and it, I agree with you. We, we definitely want to do it. That's why we got our zoo membership and our museum membership mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So and that's can, why we pay almost more than our mortgage for them to go to school that they go to. So they could be in a diverse <laughs> in environment. More. It is more. It is a mortgage. <laughs> or it is more than yeah. our mortgage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, and then and then on the flip side of that, what is one thing that you you felt like, and I, I think you touched on a little bit earlier, but what is one thing from your childhood, not thing, but just an experience, whatever it is, that you definitely want to try to break that, break the mold, and and not bring that into your kids' lives? I just I want them to like, I, yeah, I did bring up the fact that we came from the be seen, not heard. Yeah. Like we had to sit on the floor and eat our food, yeah, and we couldn't interrupt. And you know, there were just all these um, restrictions, mm-hmm. and I always joke about it. <laughs> But our kids really are free. Like they are free to to uh, talk. And uh, Harper got upset last night, and she goes, "Mommy, I'm gonna take a deep breath." And I'm just like, "Yeah." And she goes, "She don't know. I don't. She doesn't know how to take the deep breath, but she can blow it out. She blow- She's just like you know blowing." But I I encourage her to take the deep breath, talk through it. What's wrong? Like it's okay for them to express how they feel. Right. And I. I love that. Yeah. And I and I want them to when we're sitting at the table to be involved in in the conversation mm-hmm, and not mm-hmm. just be just not present, like yeah. not allowed to be present. I yeah. want them to feel like like people, like how you were treated, yeah. you know, as a kid. Like they talked to you like an adult and you were able to have thoughts and share your yeah. thoughts and I think that that's important. I, yeah. I agree, hundred percent, and I, and we we definitely strive to do that with our kids. Yeah. One thing that we didn't really talk about for you is kind of your background, which may, leads me to this thing first. Number one, I know I've done my twenty three and Me. Have you done your twenty three and Me yet? I haven't. Okay, so you need to do your twenty three and Me. Little homework for me, huh? Yes, okay. that's your homework, okay. and 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 not and, and not for everybody because it may not be for everybody. But if you are interested to know where your ancestry is from, where you, where you, what kind of makes you who you are. Yeah. Those 23 and me's, you know, uh, the, whatever, all the different DNA test things. I know those conspiracy theories, people think that they're like using it for some, you know, grand scheme. Maybe they are. I don't uh, know. That's scary. <laughs> but, well, but, that little cotton swab. Well, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The DNA thing. Oh, so that's scary. Um, There's but going to be another John out there. Like they, they're, they're creating people out of what our was that movie spit? with Will Smith? Where he had his younger his younger version of himself. Oh, I don't think anybody watched it. I don't think anybody watched it. Either. That's unfortunate. Was it a Gemini? Gemini. That's yeah. what it was. Yes. Mm-hmm. But um, one thing we didn't really talk we about like was what? your background. Like where where are your people from? Like wh- how did you? I know you talked about just kind of being. Mm. You know. Uh, I said we black. Yeah, we black. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, I don't know. I mean, my mom was adopted. Right. right. So um, that's why she. So I actually bought 23andMe as a Christmas gift for mm-hmm. all of our parents mm-hmm. in hopes that we wouldn't have to do it. But only my mom has done it out of all the parents. My dad hasn't done it. No. Your dad no. or your mom. Right. So but I got one for John as well, yeah. um, just because you don't know your uh, biological father's side. Right. Um, but we wanted it more for health reasons. Right. But um I definitely want to do it just to see um, my dad's side because my mom did it just for her, which yeah. was really great and opened up a lot for her to see like, okay, I, I come from somewhere, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? I'm sure that gave her a lot of uh, healing and encouragement to go out and, and seek them out too, yeah. Yeah. knowing that she has other family members besides her children because right now all she, she just has her kids. Right. You know, so yeah, I, I I definitely want to do it. Okay, I'll order it. Homework time. That's your homework. That was my homework. That's your homework. Well, okay. I you know I think we definitely got to hear a little bit more about who you are and, mm-hmm. and the things that kind of make you make you uh, marry mm, all the things. wife, mm-hmm. mom, designer. Okay, all those kind of things. I think that's really good. So um, I appreciate you sharing that oh, well, with us you. in the world. Thank you, honey. 
Do y'all appreciate it? I uh, appreciate I, it. Wonderful. There we go. <laughs> I love when it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, since this is the last episode, I think we should just do a quick um, kind of recap over what yeah. we, we, we kind of touched on for this season. So it, this is a you, great season. Yeah, I feel like people really wanted to know who we were. Yeah. And so, you know, we introduced ourselves. We talked about our backgrounds and just how, uh, even though we're called unequally yoked, how we've been able to just be unequally equal. Unequally equal. I think that's you like prob- that. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, we talked about passions yeah. and fears yep. and the pursuit of of our purpose. Yeah. Um, and helping people find that. You really shared a lot, you know, with your landmark course and how it really put us on a journey that we're on today. Right. You know, and how it just opened your mind to the possibilities of, you know, really going for your dreams. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and that that really that's really what it is about um, taking it back to just, you know, what you what you um, shared with what, you know, with Eric was making with you uh, as far as our family life. Did you like it? That was really our cool. Our Yu Pin family values. Our family values. Yeah. That's for me that that's really cool. And, and I'm glad that we have that now. Eleven years later. We finally it only, t- it only it. took eleven years. Eleven years. Somehow, but, you know, but it's it. a journey, right? Yeah, we, we made it somehow in the, yeah. th- through that time. But and it takes. I think it takes that amount of time to really figure out what it is that you want to strive for. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it took us. Like we could have created that from day one. Yeah, and said, okay, this is what we wish for. But now we really know because we are on the the path of pursuing our dreams. Yeah. Like what we really. And then we didn't have kids. I mean, we didn't have kids at the time. I, th- I think it's, I think just now looking at it, you know, some of the things that are on our, our family values, mm-hmm. they would not have been there, mm-hmm. you know, at the beginning because they, they weren't things that we could have seen yeah. or foreseen, you know? I, I believe, especially to dream big. Yeah. Like for me, I, I've, I didn't understand the leaving a good, consistent job. Yeah. Good paying job that you left. And, and even for myself, I, watching my parents work, yeah. Like knowing, like that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get up in the morning, make yeah. your bed, go to work, come home, eat dinner, go <laughs> do to it sleep, again. and do it. You know, <laughs> right. like that's you know what I mean. Yeah. So having consistency has always been very important to me. Yes. And then I met you, and you just, you just, you know, live. <laughs> but it's great. Like, it's great that we, you know, I, I really feel like we balance each other out. Yeah. And somebody actually asked, I meant to bring it up in the last episode, but someone asked, how is it really, what is it, the emphasis was on really, how, how is it really working with your spouse and how do you guys keep it separate? And I just think uh, whether it's in our, our business or in our marriage, you know, we definitely find a way to just respect each other yeah. and value one another and understand what each other's roles are and that at the end of the day we we have each other's backs. Yeah, you know? and one of the things that we put on the on our values mm-hmm. was the whole um self awareness. Yeah. Like being self aware. That's huge. That's something for me. that would have never that would have never been there. Yeah. That would have never been there at the beginning, right? Yeah. But I, I think, you know, um one of the things that we definitely strive for and we try to continue to work on is um, our own self awareness mm-hmm. and, and recognizing that the majority of the problems that we're gonna face start with the, within ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so the answer to that question is I don't know if there's necessarily separation between work and family mm-hmm. because it's really hard to do that. Yeah, but it, it's it is important because you're working for your family, right? Right, and and you're working like. You know, we talk about work stuff late at night. We talk about family stuff late at night. Like it mm-hmm. all, it all ends up being the same. Yeah. I, I think the the thing that really helps us work now is that we figured all those things out early, mm. and we had our we had our problems, and then we kind of worked through them. Yeah. And part of that working through was just working on self awareness, understanding yeah. that you know me recognizing that I am not a designer. Mm. I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So why would I, even though I have an opinion? Why would I put my opinion in somewhere where I know that I'm not that strong, mm. you know? Um, and, and so in the same, like, that's how those things kind of work and themselves same, out. Right. And same for me. I, I don't know construction. I'm not, I will go and, you know, put some tile. I'll go lay some tile. I'll do the work, but I won't know like how to lay out a house right. and foundations and how electrical and plumbing. I don't, 
I don't want to deal with any kind of plumbing because that to me talks about poop. So I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to think about sewage. I don't like stinky smells. None of that stuff. Well, there we go. You can have so, it. Yeah, so I just I, want the pretty stuff. You want the pretty stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think self awareness is just a big is a big answer in that. Yeah. So thank you one more time for joining us on this journey. You know, finishing up our first uh, season of Unequally Yoked yeah. with John Pierre and Mary. Oh. Um, so we're really happy that you guys came on this journey with us. Yeah. Um, Follow us on our social media tags, John Pierre, or at John Pierre TJP. At Mary TJP. And our Harper Rain Homes page at mm-hmm. Harper Rain Homes and our YouTube channel, uh, is, which is also at Harper Rain Homes as well. Yeah. So um, thank you. We're so excited for our next chapter. Oh, yeah. Uh, we will. So stay tuned. Like, yes, our season one of our podcast is done, which has been so much fun. Indeed. It's been we've enjoyed just having these conversations and even like uh, it's like we were getting to know each other again. Really? It really is. I, I'll yeah. tell you this. I think everyone should start a podcast just because it really does give you and your spouse a chance to communicate in a way that yeah. you normally wouldn't communicate. Yeah. And it's been helpful for us in our action, you know, in our real life yeah. outside of the podcast, just having really these, reconnected these, and yeah, yeah, these 30 minute, 40 minute conversations of just talking. And that, that really does help. So yeah. it's like, we didn't even pay, we didn't have to co-pay for this. Oh, this is, this is free, free, free therapy, therapy right here. Boom. Now that I'll take it. That'll be your homework. Okay. Ho. Get you some of that free therapy. Burr, 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 burr. Last DJ horn of the season. <laughs> we, we again, uh, just very much appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and supporting us. Check us out uh, real soon. We'll be coming to a TV near you. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so we'll be able to hopefully share some behind the scenes. And uh, so we're stopping right on time because we it's got to be really busy. About to crank it up. Yes. All right, y'all. Well, that is it. We are out. We're out. We're out. That's it. It's a wrap. High fives. Cheers. Bing. Wow. I got to go re-warm up my coffee. It's like real cold.